all this is dr mubeen sayed from drbeen.com welcome to one more show so the discussion today is about two new studies one from qatar and one from israel about the efficacy of vaccine only that is a person is not exposed to the virus just the vaccine and in one case two doses versus three doses then vaccine plus infection either infection before and the vaccine after or vaccine and then infection and then infection only and recovery from infection and based on these cohorts or these groups the studies observed the symptomatic cases in them and they observed the severity in them so let me give you a quick summary of it and then we'll go and look at the data and the studies israeli study did not have enough number of patients to look at severity what they found was that previous infection had the most durable outcome and i want to give this disclaimer right in the beginning that it is not advisable to seek infection so please don't uh, put yourself or others at risk and this was my cartoon that i made to go kind of an editorial cartoon did you notice the big far mama here so um what they saw was and these are our gifts for humanity so let's start from here what they saw was that somebody who had previously been infected they had a longer duration of protection and they had better protection as well someone who was infected and then got a vaccine booster as well they had renewed protection because the vaccine booster or another infection will come and boost the already trained system and they would be it would be the immune system will be ramped up so infection and then a booster provided the best protection then the vaccine only no infection before and no infection after of course they looked at the infection after as a case but no infection before vaccine only had the poorest performance in these kind of cohorts so this is the summary on the cases of severity qatari study was able to look at this severity as well and they saw that all kinds that is vaccination only or infection only or infection and vaccine uh, two doses three doses all had good protection from severe critical or fatal outcomes so that is a summary of it now let's look a little more deeply so here there were two studies one is israeli study israeli study has data from august 1 2021 till september 30 2021 so primarily delta time and the vaccine of course is pfizer biontech vaccine the israeli population that was part of this uh, uh, the study 5.7 million persons and then on the qatari study and i think that is 5.7 million percent days qatari study december 23 2021 to february 21 2022 so that includes omicron and the vaccines are pfizer or moderna and or moderna the total vaccinated population that was taking part was 1.3 million and the population for the qatar i believe is 2.8 million so let's go over the israeli study first israeli study what they were doing was they were looking at the case rate or adjusted rate per 100000 person days not 100000 persons but 100000 person days meaning one person in one let's say today i am not vaccinated so my today's day is one person day as unvaccinated tomorrow i get vaccinated and then after let's say when my vaccination is completed then that would become one person day of vaccinated and so on 
So they were looking at rate. Kathri study was looking at efficacy. So they are different numbers. Here, PI is the previous infection and recovery, and V is for vaccine. So here is the first data. Previous infection, then one dose of vaccine, a booster by vaccine, but previous infection. The case rate was 3.7 per 100,000 person days. 3.7 cases of symptomatic COVID per 100,000 person days. This was within the two months of vaccine. Somebody got infection, then a few months later, they got a vaccine. And then within the two months of taking the vaccine, when they looked at the protection, the protection was that the case rate was 3.7 per 100,000 person days. After six months had passed from the vaccine, this is interesting, within two months, the case was 3.7 number, right? After six months, it went to 11.6. So, of course, that means previous infection plus vaccine combined protection waned within six months and went down. So then the case rate increased. More cases occurred because protection went down. Then previous infection only. So no vaccine before or after, just the infected person. So after the infection, four to six months after, 10.5 cases per 100,000 person days. 10.5. Remember, previous infection and the booster, within two months of the booster, when the immune system is totally raging, 3.7. Here, four to six months after the infection, 10.5. And a year after the infection, 30.2. Look at the next number, and that would help you put this number in context. Two vaccine doses, uninfected, no infection, just vaccinated. Two doses, two doses vaccine within the two months of the second dose or the vaccine completion, 21.1 cases per 100,000. Within four to six months of previous infection, the cases were 10.5. And after a year, these were 30. Here, within two months of the second dose, 21.1. High number, higher number. And after six months of the vaccine, two doses, 88.9. Compare this to previous infection. Previous infection after a year even, 30.2 cases per 100,000 person days. Here, after six months of the second dose, 88.9 cases per 100,000. Almost triple. And I would, I would say that, of course, infection is not advisable, correct? So what is advisable is the vaccine. So you take two doses of vaccine and you wait for six months and the the case rate goes up to 88.9 from 21.1, which was already higher compared to just the infection and much higher compared to infection and a vaccine. Now, generally, protection, what is the conclusion of this study? And I'll read their conclusion as well. Generally, what they said was, number one, they could not really figure out about the severe cases because they didn't have enough number. Secondly, as the time passes, both for infection-related protection and for vaccine-related protection, the, the protection goes down. However, infection and protection afterward was better than the vaccine. So if you see here, conclusion, among persons who had been previously infected with SARS-CoV-2, 
regardless of whether they had received any dose of vaccine or whether they had received one dose before or after infection, protection against reinfection decreased as the time increased since the last immunity conferring event, infection or the vaccine. However, this protection was higher than that conferred after the same time had elapsed since the receipt of the second dose of the vaccine among previously uninfected people. So hybrid was the best. A single dose of vaccine after infection reinforced protection against reinfection. And I would say that re-exposure to the infection or the vaccine will ramp up the immune system fast enough and it would provide protection. Now, from their data, if you see it a little more carefully, look at the data here. 21.1, less than two months. Within six months, 88.9. The numbers that you can see, even over here, within the two months of the booster dose, and then after the six months, 11.6, the numbers say that the booster will be needed every second to third month to have that protection that we are looking to be in this column. That is the, and I feel that as soon as we start discussing a booster every second, third month, then the, the side effects should become a discussion to have to say, now the exposure to a possible injury is increasing. It is now not once in a lifetime or not once in a year. It is every two, three months. And what does that mean? On the other hand, the discussion will be if somebody is exposed to infection again and again, like I am. So I am double vaccinated with Moderna. Then I'm, I was infected as well. And it seems like I become infected more uh, often as well. So I think I was infected a couple of for the past two days, I'm feeling much better. I'm almost normal now. But the risk on the infection side is also true. Long COVID is a possibility. Uh, COVID-related neurological issues is a possibility. The, the lack of smell or the loss of smell, sense of smell, in turn causing the brain network not to work correctly, then causing loss of or in disruption with the memory and the processing of the memory and, and cognitive function reduces. So they both have their own outcomes, which are uh, negative as well. So one has to have those discussions. Now, this uh, Israeli study was more on the Delta side. Then they said the number of cases of severe COVID-19 among persons in each of the sub-cohorts of the recovered unvaccinated cohort and in each of the sub-cohort of the two hybrid cohorts were small. So reliable quantification of the levels of protection against severe disease in each of these three cohorts were precluded. Now, I just want to very quickly look at the table two and figure three, which is interesting. So let's go to... So this is drbean.com. In the description of this video, there is a beautiful link to buy drbean.com at a very low price. And for the audience here, I made a series for chronic inflammation as a separate package. If you have already gotten drbean.com, it is included. But if not, you can buy this package by itself. Okay, now into the Israeli study. So this is the Israeli study. And let's look at some of the data here. Interesting data. One is the figure, a uh, table one. And so what was it? Table two and figure three. So this is table two. So if you look at this table, what they're showing is cohort or the type of the category, for example, vaccinated or infected and vaccinated or uh, infected only and so on. Cohort, then the adjusted rate. So let's look at this, for example, Recovered, that is previously infected, unvaccinated cohort, previously infected and was not vaccinated. Four to six months, less than six months since the infection, the case 
rate, adjusted case rate, was 10.5 cases per 100,000 person days. Six to eight months, 14. Eight to 10 months, 20. 10 to 12 months, 28. And more than 12 months, 30. So that is the waning of the protection even after natural infection. If you see here, three doses, three doses. Within two months, 8.2. Two doses within two months 21.1 which was 21 if you see here after the infection eight to two, two eight to ten months later was in 20s range here the three doses three doses within two months 8.2 two dose cohort 0 to 2 21 it starts from there which was for infected about 10 months 2 to 4 45, 4 to 6, 69, and 6 to 8 months, 88.9. And similarly, as you can see, recovered one dose, 0 to 2 months, 3.7, 2 to 4 months, 4.3, 4 to 6, 10.3, 6 to 8, 11.6. It does go up, but protection is, this had the best protection. One dose and recovered, 4 to 6 months, 10.6, 6 to 8, 16.2. And then finally, in a visual way here, this is the recovered number A, is recovered unvaccinated cohort, previously infected. And the same data that I showed you in tabular form, here is the same data in column form. The message still is the same, that vaccine alone was not as good, even after two months it started waning too much. And so that is the Israeli study. Now we're going to go to the Qatari study. In the Israeli study, the thing that is missing is what would happen to severe cases. So Qatari study answers that. So I'm going to start right from there. This is a study from Qatar. And I think this is uh, Wheel Cornell, uh, Wheel Cornell uh, University there that had... Do you know that I have been to Qatar and I had been to some of these universities? It's a beautiful uh, campus at where they have all the universities' representations together. Um, if we go for their funding, somewhere over here is the funding. I think I'm going to waste time. So, yep, here. Supported by the Biomedical Research Program and the Biostatistics, Epidemiology, and Biomathematics Research Core at Wheel Cornell Medicine, Qatar. Okay, so back here. So we'll start the Qatar study from the severity impact so that we can kind of complete a thought for how these, these things are working. So severe COVID, protection from severe COVID, which includes ICU or death as well. Previous infection, vaccination, and hybrid immunity all these three types of cohort, all showed strong, strong effectiveness, more than 90% against severe critical or fatal COVID-19 due to BA1 Omicron. All had more than 90%. So now we have gone to efficacy. This is not the case rate anymore. The Israeli study was case rate. So efficacy, more than 90%. All of them kind of equal. So that answers that question. Now, Qatar's study, what did they see? Their data summary. They saw previous infection, previous infection, plus three doses. And the doses were, uh, the distance between the two doses were 28 days. And I think the third dose was 200 days or 200 some days like that. So previous infection plus three doses. Efficacy was 77.3%. And if you see the 95% uh, confidence interval, 72 to 81, that was a range for 95% confidence interval. So that is previous infection plus three doses, 77.3. Previous infection and two doses, 55.1. So 20 numbers dif difference if the third dose is not given. Now, three doses vaccine only, 
three doses, no infection, nothing, just three doses. The efficacy is 52.2%, which seems good. But do you know what is interesting? Median interval to positive was 43 days. And the range was also some similar short range like that. So actually, I can go to effectiveness and show you the range as well. It was kind of uh, interesting for me to see the ranges. So here, this is BA2. So if I look at three doses alone, the effectiveness of three doses of BioNTech and no previous infection was 52.5%. The range confidence interval, 48.1 to 55.9. The median interval between the third dose and the PCR test positive, meaning from the third dose to the infection, was 43 days. Third dose we are talking about, 43 days. Range was seven days to 322 days. So some people on the seventh day of the third dose, this is not the second dose that they are not completed yet. This is the third dose. It should start working within two days. Anyways, range was seven, dose, seven days was the shortest and then 320 almost a year later as well. And interquartile range was 26 to 65. So two, one to three months, three doses. That's a lot of doses to have just this short efficacy. That was interesting for me. Then previous infection alone, just the infection, no vaccine. Efficacy was 46.1. The range was 39.5 to 51.9. However, look at the median interval, 319 days. Compare that to three doses and 43 days. 319 days was the median interval. So if I go here and previous infection only, the effectiveness of the previous infection and no vaccination against symptomatic BA2, they actually did BA1 and 2 both. So I'm looking at BA2. Infection was 46.1%. Confidence interval 39.5 to 51.9. The median interval between the previous infection and the PCR test used in the study was 319 days, meaning the reinfection. Range was 90 days to 662, three months to two years. And interquartile range was 275 to 499. That is infection. Really strange, quite different numbers compared to vaccines. Now, two doses of the vaccine and nothing else, no previous infection, no three doses, just the two doses. Six months later, efficacy minus 1.1. People who were not vaccinated in the same time were faring better than the people who were two dose vaccinated. Now, I always say this and I'll say it again, people who rush to go get vaccinated, one, they may have a reason to, for example, my age or my comorbidities or such things. So their chances of getting infected is more as well. But more important thing here is, regardless of their chance, within six months, the two doses were not offering them any protection. Look at the confidence interval, minus 7.1 to 4.6. This, I think, the researchers, and I really respect them, that they did a good job, but they used, in my opinion, incorrect incorrect um, term. They said the effectiveness of, the vac of vaccination with two doses of BioNTech and no previous infection was negligible, minus 1.1%, confidence interval minus 7.1 to 4.7. This is not negligible. Negligible means you can neglect it, you can ignore it. Well, there is no efficacy. There was no efficacy. That should have been the statement, not negligible. Negligible is that there was something and you can ne neglect it, you, you can ignore it. Well, there is nothing, it's minus 1.1. 1 .1. 
And because the numbers cross unity, this is a by chance number. So we don't have to neglect it. We just have to say this, there is no efficacy. The data is not reliable. The data is by chance. Anyways, they chose to use the word negligible. That was their choice. I think it was an incorrect choice. Then similar results for Moderna COVID vaccine. So this is Pfizer and Moderna both. So two doses alone within six months, no use. Three doses within 43 days, the, the waning starts within two months. And you saw that. And then previous infection plus boosters were working better. Previous infection alone was working better as well. Now, this is it. We are done. I am very quickly going to show you the figures as well. But the data is the same as I just discussed with you. So it's just interesting. And hopefully you can look at this study as well and look at these uh, figures too. So, for example, this is figure where this is previous infection and the vaccine against BA1, original Omicron. And the way they are showing this is interesting. For example, if I look at A, effectiveness of, let me try to make it bigger. Can I make it bigger? No. The more I try to make it bigger. Okay. So here. All right. So let's look at this one. Effectiveness of previous infection and Pfizer vaccine, BioNTech, one against BA1, parent Omicron. And look at this. Previous infection, 50.2. Two doses of vaccine, minus 4.9. Two doses of vaccine and previous infection, 51.7. Three doses of vaccine, 59.6. Three doses of vaccine and previous infection, 74.4. Just, just keep getting the booster. But this is important. This is the uh, question that Israeli study did not answer, and that was severity. So here, efficacy against severe, critical, or fatal COVID, and that previous infection or two doses or two doses and infection or three doses or three doses and infection, they all had very good protection against severe cases. So that's that's a good thing. Then down here, effect in, effectiveness of previous infection and against uh, and the vaccine against BA2. So if you see here once again, previous infection, 46.1. We're talking about BA2 lineage. Two doses of vaccine minus 1.1. That's what we just discussed. Two doses of vaccine and the infection, 55.1. Three doses of vaccine, 52.2. Three doses of vaccine and previous infection, 77.3. Two doses of vaccine alone is just not even a thing to consider. Meaning, from these studies, when you think about vaccine, you have to think about three doses. And I would believe that you would have to then continue to think about boosters. But at least three doses. Here, previous infection... 73.4. This is against severe and fatal cases. So 73.4, previous infection. Two doses of vaccine is actually better, 76.8. Two doses of vaccine and previous infection, 97.8, better. Three doses of vaccine, also better, 98.2. And three doses of vaccine plus infection, 100%. So here, the two doses, or sorry, the previous infection was the least protective. Still very protective, but least protective. So that's an interesting data point. Then if we go to figure two, similar data, I think you can look at these data points as well. But here, for example, eff effectiveness of previous infection and BioNTech against symptomatic Omicron infection. And once again, previous infection protection 50.8, two doses of vaccine minus two. Minus 0 0.2, sorry, not 2. Two doses of vaccine and the infection 55, then 54, 76. So you can, you can see these numbers. That two doses is just out of the question, 2.2. What kind of an efficacy is that? So same way, there is some data here as well. This data is effectiveness of previous infection 
effectiveness of previous infection and BioNTech vaccine against any symptomatic. So if you see, see here, four to six months, so this is infection plus vaccine. Four to six months, 65.7%. Seven to nine months, 62%. So you can actually see visually 10 to 12 months, 48, 12, greater than 20, 12 months, 54. And then after that, it just crashes. 14 days to three months, and then four to six months. Now this, sorry, I have to, this is, the blue one is previous infection. The green one that is crashing is the two doses. So within 40 days to three months, 40.7. Four to six months, 13.9, and greater than six months, minus 3.4. So every three months, a booster. And then three-dose vaccine, within one month of the three-dose vaccine, 58.9, and greater than one month, 44.7. And I'm sure that if they continued that trend, it would go down as well. And so every third month. So that is the data points. This is Moderna vaccine. And if you look at it, this green one is the vaccine, I believe. And you can see it starts from 41 within three months and then 18.6, six months and minus 10 within after six months. So one, the two doses are really useless within three months, after three months. I mean, who would want to have 18.6% efficacy, which is four to six months? So once we get the two doses, the third dose has to come within the three months and then it has to come every three months. That is really what this data is showing. So um, I hope you can see the third and fourth table as well, if you are curious. Uh, my takeaway was infection plus vaccine was the best combination. And I could actually understand if you keep giving the vaccine or if you keep exposing to infection, which is a really dangerous thing, can be lethal. But in theory, if you do this, you have the immune system continuously churning up. And so protection will be good. However, if you just leave it for vaccine, then as after three months, vaccines just, they just die. They just not stay effective anymore. Previous infection stays effective for a longer period of time. Against severity, they all seem to be equally beneficial. You saw that in one case, previous infection was actually less beneficial than vaccine or vaccine plus infection. So this is the discussion. Please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, Rima said, what is the bo bottom line? So I hope the bottom line is clear in this way that number one, um, booster two, two doses is not going anywhere. Three, third dose is needed within three months. It's not within a year or within nine, within three months. And then the booster will be needed within three months. So the risk benefit analysis now has to be taken, taking into account every third month of a booster, unless the newer, better vaccines are formed. Previous infection provides protection better than the vaccine, but infection has its own downsides. So that is the bottom line. For example, if you ask me when I read this, what scared me is after six months, the vaccine protection is negative. So I am beyond six months and I've gotten the infection now. So I am kind of riding that strange time, but you can see that I'm getting infected again as well. So uh, Randolph says, has there been any study of uninfected with two doses separated by much more than three weeks? No. So UK has those studies and we should look at that. I remember talking about that earlier. Haven't looked at it again. There are no studies that actually, in my opinion, in theory, the duration between the vaccine doses should be increased. Second dose seem to be doing nothing. And it, I think it, it is doing something. It is making money for the dose sellers. But generally for protection, it is really not doing much. So maybe the two doses window should be dilated. But then the problem is between the one dose and the second dose, there is so much time. For example, with the kids 
we saw that the Pfizer for under five is useless. Two doses are actually don't do anything. So the parents are on the hook for at least three months to continue to protect because before that there is no protection, even when the child has gotten two doses. So that's the same thing, I believe, for adults as well. So that it would be interesting to look at that data. So Rima says a shot every three months. Yeah, so that is the kind of data that we are looking at. Patty says, have you checked pollen level in your area? Maybe allergies. It may be allergies. I would rather like to have allergies. Than, uh, but here is the deal. Uh, my wife and I, we respond differently to COVID compared to our allergies. My response to COVID is, uh, lethargy, runny nose, and sleep disturbance. And so I saw that in the last two days. My wife's response is um, this bells-like thing, the twitching here on the face. And she's been complaining, even now before the lecture, she was saying, my face is now for two days just continuing to twitch. What do I need to do? So I think it was an exposure to COVID, but it could be allergies generally causing inflammation and poking those areas which were already inflamed. <laughs> Sky Frog says, do we have EUA? For Sky, don't give a idea to FDA. They would actually start issuing EUAs for this as well. And Bromley says, did you test? No. My wife had done the test and it came back negative. I actually don't care for the test anymore, at least for myself. So this is the John says, are we doing only are we the only country that has recommended vaccine? So I think that once we have recommended it, then the rest of the world would follow it. Luffy, no. I just decided <laughs> no Luffy, nothing. So nothing. I did take anti-inflammatory just to do that. Okay, so like, subscribe, and share. And if you would like to support this work, which is done so lovingly for you, <laughs> You can buy me a coffee or you can use PayPal or you can become a member of Substack. You can even become a member of YouTube as long as the channel survives here. And you can also buy a plan on drbean.com. The link here, I was talking with my team today. I think we are maybe another few weeks. We will remove that link and we are changing the structure as well. At this time, it is quite an inexpensive link for you to become a member of Dr. Bean. And the other thing that I want to address, some of the folks were not happy that these videos on YouTube are not on the site. And we are we are stopped from putting COVID videos there because of somebody's complaint. But I think we are reaching a point to start them again because we haven't done anything wrong. So till that time, please bear with me. If they finally decided that we cannot, then they would stay here on YouTube. If uh, we won, then they'll be open on Dr. Bean as well. So this is the discussion. Once again, thank you very much. Like, subscribe, and share. That is the least you can do. And I'll see you tomorrow.